Hi, and welcome to 3DMotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior 3D artist. In this tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at the palette controls within Marmoset Toolbag 2. So this is the main interface for Marmoset Toolbag. All right, this is just a model, and uh, just a quick old kind of model. It's a satyr, obviously. It's actually uh, based on, I forget his name, I forget the, the designer's name, but uh, this I actually did for a tutorial class, just uh, something fun, quick and fun. Um, to rotate around the, mo the model, of course, is left, uh, the left mouse button and alt. Panning is middle mouse button, alt. And to zoom in and zoom out is the right button, alt. All right, so you can zoom in, zoom out. You can actually go through the model. Uh, that's what I was trying to do, but I thought, eh, nah, won't do it. All right, so within Marmoset, you have a couple of different palettes on both sides. In order to show them or hide them, if you want, is the space bar. You know, if you're looking at your model and you want to see it without those things occluding, you can easily just go ahead and do a quick space bar. And it hides them just so you can see more of your scene. It's, it's more uh, viewport real estate. All right, so you can see what's going on. But let's go ahead and take a look at the palettes. So we have the scene palette up here. Now this, this is everything that's in our scene. Right now the only thing in our scene is the sky, which is this particular view, which is our background. It's an HDRI image. We have a, one main camera. We can change the position of the camera. We can rotate the camera. We can scale the camera. We're not going to do any of that. I'm just showing you that you can do it. There's field of views in here. You can actually change the depth of field in here with the focus. You can actually click that on and off, you see. And then you can set up how sharp you want it to be. Oops. Like, for instance, something like that. You know, and that way you're getting a little bit of depth of field on this. And, of course, you can do the near blur and far blur, and you can adjust that. You can see the fingers are kind of disappearing based on that. Okay. So we're not going to do that right now, but you can do that. All right. So you can adjust the depth of focus, etc. there. You have a flare. So the flare usually works in, in conjunction with the depth of field, I find. And you can go ahead and set different things. The flare will actually help flare things out. It gives a little bit of a, as you can see, it's flaring out on the edges actually a little bit. So I'm not going to do any of that either. We can do distortions. So, as you can see, uh, you can, wow. It, it's it's a, a barrel and pin cushion, but it's also kind of like what we call a fisheye lens kind of thing. So let's go ahead and turn that to zero. We can do the chromatic aberration. As you can see, as I separate it, you see how it's getting that. It, it, it's as if you were wearing 3D glasses, is what it is. We can adjust the red, green, and blue. We have post effects we can look at. Uh, we've got different things here for the, the tone mapping. You can adjust that. If there's a little arrow here, you can click it and then see what changes there are. You have different curves we can adjust. Again, I'm not going to change anything because I'm kind of like the way it is. You can strengthen it. You can do the bloom. You can adjust your bloom. As you can see, that really starts to brighten things up. It also kind of gets a it, it's kind of similar as, as a bit of a flare. It kind of blooms that whole thing out. If you adjust the bloom with the vignette and the flare and everything, you get some really interesting results. As you can see with the vignette, you can it's like scrolling that in, changing how that looks in the background. We can also do a, a grain. I don't happen to have anything grain-wise. I mean, I, I don't use it so I don't know I guess you I guess you could use something like that if you wanted it to look grainy I don't tend to use it but it's there if you need it all right so you can collapse any one of these by just clicking on them and that collapses them all up all right for the Seder mesh uh, you can get a uh, here's the mesh and everything and what you can look to do is we can look to go to our render the render tab you can adjust a couple of different things. You can see that right now the viewport resolution is a 1.1. We can do it by half or double the size. 
We have stereo 3D. We can do the eye separation, you know, and swap eyes as we need to. We, if we want, we can click the wireframe button on. As you can see, let me zoom in a little bit. You can see the actual wireframe for this mesh. Now, right now, it's set at only about 30%. If we were to crank that up to say 100, you can now see what the mesh looks like on the model. Also, there is a color on this. If we want, we can say adjust it to red, something like that, if you wanted. Or, of course, you could just go to something, say, like black. And there you go. And you can have it really stand out so you can see what it looks like on the mesh. Of course, we can then drop it back down to, say, something like 50, so it's half strength. All right. We can look to add in any local reflections. Let me go ahead and turn the wireframe off. There are some. Watch in this area. If you see it turn on off, it's actually picking up some of the reflections from whatever the particular background is going to be. You do high res shadows. The ambient occlusion, I don't know if you guys can see that. The ambient occlusion kind of goes on and off It's for the shadowing. But it's not very strong right now. It's only 1.5. But if you crank that up, look at this. Look how dark it goes for the shadowing. It goes for it all over. Of course, it makes a whole, you know, it grabs this shadowing, makes it darker, which is great so you can see it more. But it will increase the shadowing, the ambient occlusion all over the model. You'll notice how dark it got in the chest by really cranking that up there, okay? Again, I don't tend to have to adjust that very much. Usually, 1.5 is usually a, a good number. You can do a watermark. Like, there you go, rendered in Marmoset tool bag, if you want to do that. Uh, you could turn around and uh, do the watermark so it's dark. See? It's inverting it, basically. You can hide it in the viewport. I don't tend to use watermarks, but in case you want to, it is there. If you go to the animation, there are a couple of different things you can do with the animation. You can do the scene turntable. All right, so you can uh, decide to have the scene rotate around. For instance, let me show you really quickly, and we'll do a play. And we're going around the scene. Of course, our, our background doesn't change, but our scene does. Obviously, you can see, in fact, you do, the background of the, um, the beard is even there. But there's the camera. You can see how the camera's, because we're looking at the entire scene as it rotates around, and our camera, of course, is in that direction. If we go ahead and stop that, I'll go back to zero. We can go to our camera itself and hit 10. And this time, it's the camera is moving. This time, you see our scene is actually, you're, you're actually going around the scene. That's why you actually see the background changing, OK? So it's something simple like that. And then for our sky, if we go ahead and do that, then it's then our in fact it's just our background only just the sky only is rotating all right so you can do the entire scene as a rotation you can do just the camera as a rotation or you can do just the background just the scene itself a rotation of course you can see it actually affects the lighting on our model uh, by making the turn the sky itself rotate around but again that might be something you're looking for i don't know to go back to stop I love I love as soon as you stop it, it goes back to its original setup. That way, it's, it's, it keeps it nice and simple. By the way, if we go to our scene, if we double click our sky, this is the HDR map being used at the moment. Okay, we can obviously brighten it up, blow it right out. Uh, we can dim it down, whatever. If if we brighten it up, of course, it it affects the lighting on the model and the shadows and everything else. We can also add in our own image. I don't have any HDRI images, but in case you do. Or it has some presets already to it. If we click some of these presets, for instance, there's the glacier, the castle sunset, the desert, inside a house, which of course would have to rotate around so it's not such in silhouette. There's an evening view. There's a forest, garage. The garage is usually, I think, what comes in as a standard usually. So there's a bunch of different ones you can go through. They come with, uh, oh, there's an interesting one. It comes with a, a, a particular light setup. So when you look to, say, want to add in lights later on, you want to kind of keep in mind it, it's going to work in conjunction with your background. 
So you want to make sure you pick a background that's going to be complementary to what you need. Right there, by the way, as you can see, is I can actually add a new light in here just by clicking on the image itself, which is the light editor, to add something in. Okay. If you don't like it, you can just right click and it's off. All right. We're not going to add the light in. We're just going to leave it alone for now. Again, we can go ahead and then rotate it around. As you can see, that does change how it affects the lighting on the model itself. So you want to keep that in mind when you're looking for doing final renders. You want to you want to rotate your model around to get the right coloring, the right view you want to be able to have. You definitely want to set up the brightness. You know, too too bright and lights are just going to kill it. Too low and lights may not affect it as much as you want. Uh, and that's pretty much it for for just figuring out the different palettes and the different things within uh, the palette controls itself in Marmoset 2. All right, I hope this has been fun for you. This has been 3DMotive.com, and my name is Stephen G. Wells. Thanks for watching.